So our first news story, a new anime series from the creator of Lucky Star. The new uh, anime series in this case is going to be called um, Maisetsu, M-A-E-S-E-T-S-U. Now when I say it's by the creator of Lucky Star, slight difference here. Um, it is actually being um, created by Katakawa, and there are multiple, multiple people involved. The creator of Lucky Star, uh, Kagami Yoshimitsu, will be drawing a Fokuma manga for the project. So it will definitely be involved, but not necessarily the creator of this. Also cool, uh, Shota Goto will be the um, uh, main script writer. And Freak, an otaku-based set of voice actors, will be cast members. And it'll be, that will be coming... Um, at some point, we do not have an actual date or whatever on this one. Um, the, the, the description, though, I love. The project will center on four girls at the height of their youth, att attempting to achieve their dreams even as they struggle gallantly. Okay. Not quite sure what that means, but hey, that is, that is a thing that is coming, and so I guess we can, we can look forward to that. Um, actually, I will look forward to that. It sounds you know, fun and charming and all that kind of stuff, so hey, why not? Uh, let's see here. Next on the news items, um, Gen Lock will be coming out on Toonami August 3rd. This is the latest series by Rooster Teeth, creators of Ruby, and way back in the day, Red vs. Blue. Um, and uh, Toonami will be premiering this on television at least, August 3rd. It actually you know, released online some time ago. I believe that was um, uh, back in... Uh, January? Yeah, January 26th was when this initially released. So uh, this is a post-apocalyptic, or I guess a dystopian, futuristic, uh, you know, CGI anime series um, done domestically in, in the U.S. with actual, like, Screen, Act Screen Actors Guild actors. So, like, people you'd know, including, like, David Tennant. Whee! So um, some really cool voice talent there, and uh, released to kind of mixed reviews. Um, I know... Um, most of the kind of critical press seemed to like it, but there was some fan reservations initially. Um, so it will be coming out for a lot more people to see August 3rd. Still, television is a big deal and is one of those ways that people find and watch these things. So, you know, not a bad thing. Uh, can't complain. Um, yeah, Rooster Teeth is, is not something I've really dug too deep into, so I can't say one way or the other. Moving on, um, let's see here, to... There we go. A new anime from Yoshitaka Amano. Although, again, kind of like the other one, he's involved, but he's not like the creator creator. Um, this is going to be... So it's a, this is a weird one. This is really a weird one. Um, it's set in 2030 in Japan uh, with this virus outbreak that turns people into basically zombies. Um, and the main characters are a samurai and a ninja from the Edo period in Japan who time travel forward into 2030 and get together with some doctor who's trying to cure this virus. Okay, uh, there is a trailer up on YouTube and the animation has its issues. Like, it's not particularly amazingly animated and there's some weird coloration in it. Uh, definitely um, uh, has a very distinctive uh, art style if you're not familiar, Yoshitaka Amano has done a bunch of Final Fantasy character designs. So he's that guy. A bunch of other folks involved. And again, so Amano is the character designer here, not like the creator. But he's kind of the, the biggest name involved in this. So that's really cool. And I'm looking forward to see uh, kind of where that goes. But it's kind of hard to tell but at this point. It seems like a really weird premise. And uh, again, that trailer just didn't really hugely impress. Some, some neat moments in it. But... Um, didn't quite blow me away. So, who knows? We'll see. Uh, moving on, a uh, bit of some news from Crunchyroll. Um, Crunchyroll um, is going to be uh, providing some content to HBO Max, the new HBO streaming service. Now, there was some question about this when it was announced. Uh, this does not mean that Crunchyroll is moving into HBO Max. Crunchyroll is still going to be a streaming service. It's still going to have all its content. Basically, all this means is that um, Crunchyroll is providing some subset of its content to HBO Max to also stream on that platform, Crunchyroll being a part of the giant megacorp that HBO is also part of. So they're kind of part of this big overall umbrella deal 
to put stuff on HBO Max. So what that means is there should be some anime on HBO Max, which is a good thing, I think, when that happens. There were some arrests uh, in, actually in the Philippines and in Japan. Um, uh, the headline here is a little bit wrong. There was an arrest in the Philippines and two arrests in Japan uh, uh, about a particular uh, thing going on with a site called Manga Mura, which was apparently one of the big manga um, pirating sites in Japan. And this story goes back a little ways. Back in, uh, so the, the site launched in 2016. Back in uh, 2018, the Japanese government went to ISPs and said, here are three major manga pirating sites. And we're talking, like, Manga Mura got something like, uh, they had some numbers here, um, um, between September 2017 uh, and February 18, uh, Manga Mura got 620 million visits. 620 million visits in six months. Yeah. So this was not a small time operation. Um, they had huge amounts of content on there, apparently. So the Japanese government went to these ISPs and said, this is clearly illegal content. Will you do something about it? Now, the government made it very clear this was voluntar voluntary. They were just going and saying, you know, this would be a, a, a nice step for you to take from a legal perspective, but we're not forcing you. Um, interestingly, the ISPs did not block Mangamura, but it went down. Both the web server and the image hosting server went offline shortly thereafter. Um, and as far as anyone can tell, that was done by the site's administrators. So they were kind of running, is the, the implication there. Uh, but what happened is that um, back uh, earlier this week, a man named Romi Hoshino, also known as Zake Romi, was arrested in the Philippines uh, by request from, from the Japanese government, basically saying this is a, a guy involved in this. And so he is awaiting extradition back to Japan. And then later this week, uh, two more arrests were made in Japan uh, of friends of uh, Romi Hoshino, who apparently were also involved in this. Like the, the police were like, we, we know they uploaded this specifically, and they were clearly part of this set of people who were uploading a lot of material. Um, so that is ongoing. Now, again, this is one of those things where people are like, oh my gosh, they're arresting everyone involved in pirating. I don't think that's what's going on here. Um, I think basically the, it looks like the publishers went to the Japanese government and said, here are the big pirates, right? Here are the ones who have huge amounts of material and who are blatantly, you know, just uploading massive amounts of content onto their sites. Uh, in fact, we had some numbers here. Um, do, 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 do. See if I can read up on this. Um, they believe there are tens of thousands of volumes of content on the site. So, yeah, that's a lot of material. Again, not, not small time. Probably had ads on it, right? So they are probably profiting to some level, some, you know, at some level off of this material. Uh, and, yeah, so um, arrests are being made. Historically, when this has happened, the, um, uh, when they have actually been prosecuted, you know, it's minimal in the, in the form of punishment. There's been some monetary damages, maybe some, some brief jail time. Um, but it's kind of saying, you know, this is, this is illegal and we should probably do something about it. So that is what's going on there. Uh, obviously, uh, we don't know exactly you know, where that's going or what's going to happen with that. Um, definitely still ongoing, but uh, it, is a, it is a thing. So FYI, um, you know, I guess don't be part of a Japanese manga upload site. I don't know. Uh, moving on, uh, an odd news item from this week. Yasuyuki Ueda, one of the original creators behind Serial Experiments Lane, the very trippy sort of techno-thriller thing, anime series from 1998, uh, recently announced because um, there's a lot of interest uh, around Lane. It's 20 years old now. Um, he went to his bosses at NBC Universal, which are now the rights holders, and he said, can we do something for the fans? And th the, uh, he, he said he's pleased to announce that um, Serial Experiments Lane is now going kind of open source in the sense that NBC Universal, the rights holder, is now officially allowing fan works based on Lane. In other words, um, you, know, you have no um, you have no fear that anyone's going to come after you for doing fan art, fan fiction, anything like that based on Serial Experiments Lane. Um, it has to be nonprofit, and it has to be non-adult. But as long as you're doing that, NBC Universal will never come after you for in any way, shape, or form. 
Now, some people uh, looking at this were like, well, that's actually kind of always been true. But here's the thing. Like, you are still technically doing, yes, it's a fan thing, but you're still technically, you know, stepping on copyright toes. So NBC Universal is explicitly saying, you know, um, uh, we are allowing this. This is part of essentially our license, our global license of these characters and this, you know, this material to the world. That's pretty darn awesome. Uh, and I'm really excited to see that happening, and I hope to see it happen to more shows. Certainly a 20-year-old anime property uh, that has seen, like, no sequels, no other material, um, uh, is, is ripe for this sort of thing, where it's like, okay, you know, the original copyright um, holders, they can certainly cert continue to profit off the original work, but there's probably not going to be any confusion over people thinking that some fan work is, you know, the official sequel to the show. So I think that's, that's pretty darn awesome that people are able to do that, so we can actually start doing our... Uh, um, if you want to do a, a lane fan animation, now is the time. Start, start on that. So pretty cool. Uh, finally today, kind of an odd piece of news. Otaku Coin is a cryptocurrency for otaku. And the idea here is to create a cryptocurrency that is specific for anime fandom. Um, and to be clear, a lot of folks think cryptocurrency is just like making money. Um, and it often is. But the folks behind Otaku Coin are looking to um, create literally like a a unique currency for specific things. It's not just this is going to replace the U.S. dollar or the yen or what have you. Um, this is basically saying we can target this to specific activities and create rewards that are specific for that. So the idea being that um, you know you could use um, a a company could offer this cryptocurrency to fans who buy a particular work, and then those fans can use that money to buy. Um, uh, you know, material from certain uh, anime vendors is the idea. So Otaku Coin has announced they're going to try this thing. It's still in very much pilot mode to basically allow um, to, to basically um, pay people who do translations, even fan translations. Um, you know, it basically, if you submit a fan translation of a thing, then you can get some of this cryptocurrency as a result. You'll get, you know, you basically can submit that to the, the blockchain and get get. Uh, uh, currency out of it. So it's very interesting, the idea of having this sort of generic thing that rewards you for making fan translations. Obviously a lot of things to think about in terms of how that actually works, but a really neat idea. So who knows where that's going to go, but uh, definitely fascinating. Um, so yeah, I thought that was um, all stuff worth mentioning. And um, yeah, that is the news of the week. Hope you find that interesting. And until next week, um, Keep your eyes out for more news, I suppose. Also, apparently, there's a new Lupin CGI film that everybody's going crazy about. Um, you should really check that out. It's really impressive.